The opening scene of the movie immediately immerses the audience in the picturesque coastal town of Isla Negra, Chile, in 1969. The serene sound of the ocean waves provides a soothing backdrop to the bustling activity of fishermen bringing in their daily catch. Amidst the boats and nets, a yellow taxi appears, symbolizing the arrival of a new character. The camaraderie of the town is evident as the community works together to sell its prized sea base. The harmonious atmosphere of the town is palpable, with a sense of closeness and support between the locals. This scene sets the stage for the story of Pablo Neruda's life and how his poetry reflects the beauty and struggles of Chilean life. The joy and liveliness of the family's mealtime are evident as they dance and sing while cleaning the floor. Mario's decision to give up fishing and pursue a different career path is met with some opposition from his father, who values hard work and the traditional way of life. However, Mario's family still supports him and encourages him to find success in his way. As Mario ventures out to find a new job, his eyes are immediately drawn to a woman wiping the windows of the hostel, and he is struck by her beauty. Though he has never been one to believe in love at first sight, he can't help but feel a deep connection with this mysterious woman. At the post office, Mario encounters a bearded man working the afternoon shift, Cosme, who tells him of a unique job opportunity. Mario's enthusiasm is palpable as he learns that the job involves delivering mail to none other than Pablo Neruda, the famous Chilean poet. Mario is thrilled at the chance to meet and interact with such a renowned figure, and he eagerly sets off to Isla Negra on his bicycle. Excited and nervous, Mario prepares for his first day as a mailman with meticulous attention to detail. He carefully selects a pageboy hat, a satchel, and a leather jacket, wanting to look his best. He sets off on his bike, pedaling steadily but struggling on the steep incline leading up to Pablo Neruda's house. Despite the heat and the strain on his bike, Mario perseveres, determined to make a good impression. When he finally reaches the house, he rings the bell and is greeted by Pablo himself. Mario is in awe of the famous poet and diplomat but tries to maintain his composure as he hands over the packages one by one. Pablo seems pleased with the new mailman and offers him money as a gesture of appreciation. However, Mario is not there for the money but rather for the opportunity to be near the great writer. After completing the delivery, Mario purchases a book of Pablo's poems titled Elemental Odes, and begins reading it eagerly. As he reads, his romantic and sensitive nature is stirred, and he finds himself deeply moved by the poet's words. Mario is a dreamer, and his encounter with Pablo Neruda only intensifies his desire to pursue a life of beauty and meaning. Mario pedals his bike to the island, relishing the salty breeze and the crashing of the waves against the shore. As he reaches his destination, he pulls out his beloved book of poetry, and begins to recite the verses to his father. His father listens intently and then asks if there are any poems about love. Mario eagerly flips through the pages until he finds what he is looking for and begins to read. As he rides past the hostel, Mario catches a glimpse of Beatriz, but his nerves get the best of him, and he doesn't say a word. Mario continues to visit Pablo Neruda's house, reading and admiring his poetry. One day, while riding a bus, Mario finds himself sitting next to Beatriz. He can feel his heart racing as he steals glances at her, but he doesn't dare to speak to her. After noticing Mario's admiration for his poetry, Pablo invites him inside his home. Pablo is surprised that Mario has only read his elemental odes and proceeds to show him his other works, boasting that they are far superior. Mario is slightly offended that Pablo compares his beloved poems to mere metaphors. Meanwhile, Beatriz is working at the hostel and watching Mario with curiosity. During one visit, Pablo teaches Mario the art of describing the island poetically, and romantically, filling his mind with vivid and beautiful words. Impressed by Mario's passion for poetry, Pablo encourages him to write a poem of his own. After crafting his first poem, Mario reads it to Pablo, who is amused by its trembling with words. They discuss the construction and use of metaphors, and Mario begins to understand the complexity and beauty of the craft even more. Later on, Mario pays another visit to the hostel in search of Beatrice. She invites him to join her and her sister, Clarita, who happens to be a nun in a soccer pool game. While Beatriz is playing, Mario is entranced by her beauty and cheerful demeanor. However, Beatriz is eventually called away to work, leaving Mario with a longing to spend more time with her. Overcome with feelings for Beatriz, Mario takes a ride by the sea on his bike, excited to complete his next delivery job. He stops by Pablo's place to deliver a telegram, but his arrival interrupts Pablo, who is trying to concentrate. Mario shares his love for Beatriz and confides that he can't seem to say anything to her except for five words. In response, Pablo recalls the story of Dante, who fell in love with a woman named Beatriz, but their story did not end well. Pablo takes a moment to read the telegram, and his expression sours. The telegram informs him that the popular United Coalition is interested in him running for president against his friend, Salvador Allende. Despite the potential opportunity for Neruda to run for president, he instead chooses to support Allende's campaign. Pablo suggests helping Mario win over Beatriz, and they head to the hostel where Beatriz works. Beatriz is impressed that Pablo Neruda has caught Mario's attention and offers them a glass of red wine, 
and empanadas. Pablo realizes that winning Beatriz's heart might not be as easy as he initially thought. To help, he gives Mario books with dedication, hoping to impress Beatriz. Meanwhile, Neruda campaigns for the Fishermen's Association and gains support from the Communist Party list. Eventually, he departs for his campaign against Allende, leaving Mario to call Beatriz, who is too busy with work to talk much. Feeling bored while working at the post office, Cosme approaches Mario and asks, if he has any money. Mario says he does not have it because everything goes to his family. Cosme ends up giving Mario some money, which he gladly accepts. Meanwhile, on the radio, Neruda's voice booms as he gives a passionate speech to the miners. Mario is reminded of the poet's immense popularity and influence. Later, Mario goes to the hostel to buy drinks, hoping to catch a glimpse of Beatriz. However, Beatriz's mother and the owner, who seems to have a good read on Mario's intentions, give him a hard time. The locals are heatedly discussing the upcoming elections, and Elba encourages Mario to stay and join the conversation. She sarcastically suggests he share some of his poetry and help with Pablo's campaign. However, it's clear that Elba doesn't like Pablo much, and Mario can sense her disapproval. Feeling a bit down after the encounter, Mario is about to leave when Beatriz suddenly appears. At home, Mario's father offers him a piece of fatherly advice to write a poem for Beatriz, but Mario is skeptical, insisting that he can't write poetry. His father suggests he find a different way to express his feelings if he's unable to do so in person. Following his father's advice, Mario approaches a group of children flying kites and purchases one. He attaches his heartfelt letter to it and sends it soaring into the sky. As Beatriz watches the kite fly and land on the beach, she realizes it's from Mario and follows it. Mario's heart races as he sees Beatriz approaching. They exchange pleasantries and pretend to order conger eel, and Mario recites a poem he's made up on the spot. Beatrice finds his poetic gesture amusing and inquires if he's a frequent poet, to which Mario responds by leaning in for a kiss. However, Beatrice playfully evades his advance and heads home, leaving Mario feeling euphoric and on cloud nine. Beatrice returns from the beach and continues working at their hostel. She becomes distracted causing her to break some utensils. Beatrice's mother, angry, scolds her daughter for her clumsiness and sends her to her room as she continues to ruminate over her worries. Meanwhile, Mario pedals his bicycle along the coast, lost in thought about Beatrice. As the sunset paints the sky in warm hues and the waves crash against the shore, Beatrice begins to feel herself falling for him. But her reverie is short-lived as her mother interrupts and demands to know about the boy. Beatrice shares Mario's name in their conversations about politics and poetry. But her mother quickly shuts down the idea, warning her daughter that men who use words to woo women are only tricksters. Elba says that she would rather have a man disrespect Beatrice other than men pretending to be good and romantic to fool her. Then Elba decides to send her to her aunt in Valparaiso. Beatrice tries to defend Mario's sincerity by retelling his poetic words, but her mother remains skeptical, citing poetry as nothing but lies and metaphorical flattery. The conversation takes a darker turn as her mother reveals the truth about their father, causing Beatrice to become resolute in her decision to stay. Her mother, still fixated on the idea of poetic deception, recites a poem by Neruda about sailors who leave women behind, pregnant and alone. She mocks the comparisons of women to objects and warns Beatrice of the dangers of falling for such words. Elba talks sense into her but Beatrice is not sweet. In the end, Elba decides to let her stay and be a prisoner, not wanting her to see that boy. As Mario goes back to the hostel, he finds himself blocked by Elba, who firmly tells him that they will close the hostel and move somewhere else. He feels disheartened by the news and goes back to the office, where his bearded boss wants to properly say goodbye to his wife. The solemn atmosphere is accentuated by the urn of ashes he is holding, and they embark on a boat in the middle of the sea. The boss scatters the ashes in the ocean, bidding his wife a final farewell. Mario wraps sea base and sells them, earning his livelihood in the sea. As he is fishing, Clarita, Beatrice's sister, gives him a flirtatious wink, trying to send him a message. He finds it amusing, but his attention is drawn away by his father's insinuation that he is hitting on a nun, which he denies playfully. Despite this, he still attends the mass and is pleasantly surprised to find Beatrice singing. She spots him behind her, and for a brief moment, they share a sweet gaze. However, their tender moment is interrupted by Elba, who notices and covers Beatrice's face. Mario slips out to avoid any confrontation and is confronted by Elba as he rides away on his bike. He scurries away quickly, feeling uneasy about Elba's intimidating presence. While listening to a radio message at the office, Mario notices some unusual exchanges between the patrons about picking up a package. It dawns on him that these couples are using the radio station to send secret messages to each other via coded language. Inspired, he decides to send a message to Beatrice through the radio, using her lips taste like anise as a code to introduce himself without revealing his true identity. Delighted, Beatrice responds and they continue to communicate through the station, using codenames cousin for Beatrice 
Citrus and Pigeon for Mario. Eventually, they agree to meet with the help of Clarita. Despite their passionate kiss, Beatriz informs Mario that they cannot continue seeing each other. Despite this, they express their love for each other. Clarita buys them time by keeping their secret from her mother while they bid their farewells. As a parting gift, Mario gives Beatriz a piece of a poem and instructs her to read it. Later that night, Beatriz reads a passage from 100 Love Sonnets, only to tear it apart in frustration, feeling that Mario had lied to her. Beatriz sends a straightforward message saying she is going to Valparaiso feeling betrayed. Mario suddenly appears, and Clarita accuses him of being a liar. Mario confesses his desire to marry Beatriz, but Clarita reveals that Beatriz writes music and is familiar with Neruda's poetry. Clarita implies that Mario plagiarized Neruda and sent it to Beatriz, causing her to lose trust in him. Clarita leaves, and the radio announcer comments on the situation as problematic. Meanwhile, Beatriz boards the bus to Valparaiso, consumed by her mixed emotions. Mario waits nearby, hoping to make amends. He seeks the help of Clarita, who is serving food for the community. Mario appeals to Clarita's unwavering honesty as a nun, urging her to disclose Beatriz's whereabouts in Valparaiso. He praises her devotion to God and compliments her dedication to the community, and Clarita eventually relents and gives Mario the address. Throughout their conversation, Mario continues to compliment Clarita's virtues, expressing admiration for her as the best nun he has ever met. As Beatriz continues to work as a waitress, she is hit on by a customer, Giulio, who seems to adore her beauty as well. Meanwhile, the streets are filled with the fervor of communism and protests. She steps outside to witness the demonstrations and, in a moment of mistaken identity, believes a passing mailman to be Mario. Her longing for him intensifies. Mario, on the other hand, is growing increasingly anxious as he receives no response from Beatriz to his letters. His boss suggests that perhaps she has moved on and found someone richer than a mere fisherman poet. The boss empathizes with Mario's lovesick state and encourages him to pursue his passion for poetry, in the hopes that it will help him win Beatriz's heart. At night, Beatriz is followed by Julian on a motorbike, who warns her of the dangers of walking alone, and offers her a ride. Though initially hesitant, she eventually agrees to accompany him. After anxiously waiting for a response from Beatriz, Mario finally receives a letter from her, which is also a poem. However, his mother is unimpressed with his writing and criticizes it. This only fuels Mario's determination to improve, and he continues to write poetry. Meanwhile, Julian persists in his attempts to win over Beatriz and they exchange romantic poems with each other. Mario even asks Clarita to read his poems for him as he enjoys the sound of her voice. As they correspond through their poetic expressions of love and affection, Mario becomes more skilled at crafting his verses and creating works of art. Mario's boss is incredulous when he learns that Mario wrote the letter. When a reply arrives from Beatriz, she is moved by it but also expresses her anger towards Mario for his plagiarism and deceit. She tells him that she hates him, and Mario is crestfallen but recognizes the significance of her words. He is amazed at Beatriz's ability to craft a flawless poem and implores her to allow him to be everything she desires and eventually become her poet. As he gazes at the ocean's sunset, Mario is filled with hope. Beatriz rehearses her poem in front of Julian, but he fails to comprehend its poetic nature and meaning, unlike Mario. When Julian correctly interprets one of the lines, Beatriz kisses him. Beatriz sends another letter, stating that Mario's words fail to persuade her. She declares that she fell in love with a blunt man whom she met in a minute but who does not understand poetry. Mario is dejected and goes to the sea at night, where his boss advises him to accept that Beatriz is just a friend and not to expect her to return. Mario is furious and storms out. He goes to the radio station again. During that time, Alend won as the president because Neruda gave way. He will return to Isla Negra. Neruda steps aside to let Alend be president as the Communist Coalition Party leader. As Mario sat at his desk, he felt a sense of importance regarding the words he had written. However, he was not entirely confident in their accuracy and welcomed the offer of correction. The advice given was to replace I love you with I will love you, as a promise holds more weight than a mere declaration of affection. Wario's train of thought was interrupted by the appearance of an unknown individual, prompting him to quickly stash his bicycle out of sight. Meanwhile, Elba unexpectedly arrived at Pablo's doorstep and immediately shared her concern over her daughter being targeted by Mario Jimenez's advances. Elba explained that Mario had been sending her daughter dirty love poems, using stolen metaphors from the works of Neruda, a renowned poet who had even recognized Mario's talent. Pablo questioned his responsibility in the matter, to which Elba reminded him that he had been the one teaching Mario. Elba was not pleased with romantic men, as she had her daughter at a young age and was left heartbroken by a sweet-talking lover. She warned Pablo that if Mario continued to her daughters, she would take matters into her own hands and ruin his face. Elba's words carried a sense of protectiveness towards her daughters, born out of her own painful experiences. She held a deep disapproval of poets and their seductive language, which had caused her so much heartache in the past. As the conversation continued, it was evident that Elba's concern for her daughters was unwavering, and she was willing to take any measures necessary to keep them safe from harm. 
As Elba stormed off, Pablo couldn't help but feel agitated. He picked up the phone and immediately began scolding Mario for his inappropriate behavior towards Elba's daughter. Despite being in the midst of an Alend campaign, Pablo's mind kept drifting back to the people in his poem and his beloved Isla Negra. Mario couldn't help but feel a sense of hopelessness as he expressed his feelings toward Beatrice. He wondered what the point of having eyes would be if he never saw her again, to which Pablo responded with a dismissive laugh. Mario, feeling as though Pablo had gotten him into the mess, implored him to help. However, Pablo quickly put Mario in his place, reminding him that borrowing books was not the same as copying works for one's use. An intellectual debate ensued as they argued over the ethics of what Mario had done. Mario argued that poetry was for anyone to use, while Pablo maintained that poems should be created with reason, not just the heart. As Mario stormed off, his mind raced with frustration and disappointment toward Pablo. He arrived home to find his father and an unexpected guest, Pablo, drinking together. Pablo handed Mario his notebook full of poems, as well as Beatriz's poems, and praised their work. Mario humbly remarked that he believed Beatriz's poems were better than his own. Pablo then shared a lecture and riddle about Elba's anger toward him, alluding to the possibility of her coming to his house on the day of his return. Mario's father ominously predicted that something would happen the following day. Mario couldn't help but feel conflicted about Pablo's sudden appearance and praise for his work. However, he couldn't deny the thrill of excitement at the possibility of Beatriz's poems being recognized as superior. Despite Mario's nerves about seeing Beatriz at the party, Pablo encourages him to approach her as a person rather than a poet. The party is a jubilant affair, with everyone celebrating Pablo's successes in the Alend campaign. However, amidst the festivities, Clarita purposely spills juice punch on the floor, and Elba rushes to clean it up. Pablo signals for another waitress to break some bottles, causing Beatriz to come out of her room and help. Meanwhile, Pablo delivers a mesmerizing poetic speech, captivating the audience and hindering Elba from keeping an eye on her daughter. As the speech reaches its climax, Beatrice sneaks out and finds Mario in a dark alley. Meanwhile, the partygoers cheer for Pablo, and Elba waits for an opportunity to leave. But Pablo keeps stopping her, continuing his speech until Elba realizes what Pablo is doing. They meet in a storage box, and Mario asks for forgiveness for lying. Beatrice says she'll never forgive him and that she's no saint either. Mario proposes to marry her and convinces Elba to allow it. Beatrice thinks for a while and then moves away. They start they indicate that they will make love. Elba realizes that Pablo is helping the two of them meet, and he calms her down and uses his words again to convince her to let it go. The lively party continued, with guests enjoying themselves until Beatrice and Mario walked in, holding hands and reigniting their relationship. However, Elba was fuming with anger, and it took Pablo's intervention to restrain her. Beatrice then introduced Mario to her mother once more, revealing that she had used her persuasive words to win him back. Mario presented a letter to Elba, announcing Beatrice's upcoming nuptials, which he believed to be a testament to Elba's teachings. He even went as far as expressing his love for Beatrice romantically, and chanting the mother with his heartfelt words. Mario went on to praise Elba for taking good care of her daughters, although Elba brushed it off as mere metaphors, which she detested. Nonetheless, Pablo urged Elba to forgive the young lovers. Beatrice then took the stage once more, declaring her love for Mario and explaining that despite the numerous poets in Chile, he was the only one she cared for. The audience was spellbound by this romantic display of affection. After much resistance, Elba finally comes around and blesses the union of her daughter and Mario. The couple celebrates their love by performing the cuca, a traditional Chilean courtship dance, with the support of their loved ones. Overcome with emotion, they share a kiss, relieved that their love will no longer be hindered. Pablo watches as they begin their new life together, attending their wedding in the church. Meanwhile, Pablo's father continues his peaceful life of fishing. In a heartwarming turn of events, Beatriz's mom finally accepts Pablo, and the post office requires a new mailman with a bicycle. They reveal that they have a son and are running a hostel, marking a new chapter in their lives. Even Elba, who had once been opposed to Mario, is now on good terms with him, holding her grandson and accepting Mario as a part of their family.